did you watch Stranger Things? No, but I heard there were so many. Uh, uh, when the season four was released on OTT platform, there was so many bursts. System got crashed out, and service was remained unavailable for a brief period of time. So, and nearly around thirteen to fourteen thousand requests were like uh, were hit on that particular platform that uh, during that interval, and people actually stayed late in the night just to watch the first hand of the copy. I know, right? That sounds crazy. Uh, also, I heard a commendable job was done with respect to the performance tests and better architecture design and implementation during the recent telecast of India versus Pakistan match, which had whopping 1.3 crore of light traffic. Can you even imagine? Uh, uh, also, I think I'm sure that the engineering team there must have done rigorous performance testing during this huge uh, event. Uh, I, what do you actually mean by shifting the uh, performance testing? So, according to me, in the layman terms, shifting left in the performance means increased collaboration between the developers and the testers so that we can actually debug the, debug the issues, identify the issues early in the stage cycle and can identify what challenges that we have come across so that uh, there would be less challenges in the later stages and issues would be identified earlier. So here everyone, I am Lakshita. I am working as a performance engineer in SDEF, uh, performance engineer in Cvent, and uh, with me I have Ekta. Hi guys, I'm Ekta working as lead SZ in Cvent, and I have tried my hands in multiple aspects of quality. And my tongue nakli hai, hockey ka work. Jokes apart. Um, Moving on to the agenda, we'll be going through the quick intro, uh, moving on to the challenges that, are, that we face during the performance uh, testing in today's technology world. Then we'll move forward with the automated solution that we implemented in C event. Uh, we'll also talk about the practice, practices that worked for us. Uh, moving on, uh, you can fire us with all your questions. So, I would request you guys to know, uh, I would just want to know if any of you have done performance testing in your organization or have been working on that. That's pretty a good number. Okay, so uh, someone, uh, someone wants to build a software and someone wants to build a product and for that we have like two different uh, kinds of consumers right now. So humans and uh, softwares and human when they want softwares to work just like any other human like they want to, uh, to, uh, to get the response at the pace at the fast pace but and there comes a speed and if there is any lagging in the speed they would just switch to the next alternate software and there comes the performance testing again so yeah so what's black box testing is basically and how it can be categorized so func uh, functional and non-functional testing. Functional testing is basically catering to the verification of the functional aspects and while uh, non-functional testing caters to the verification of the non-functional parameters like performance, reliability, scalability, endurance and everything is included over there. For the functional testing we actually use SRS documents while for the non-functional testing we don't have such documentation and it actually checks the capability to check the environment uh, in the external environment so yeah so non functional testing can be categorized into accessibility testing uh, performance testing and security testing and many more focusing just on the performance testing it can be uh, uh, said uh, like it is a software testing process which basically tests the speed of the application the reliability the scalability stability of the application <laughs> and the resource usage on the application software application over a particular workload um, Talking just about the uh, performance testing, it can further be divided into load testing, uh, stress testing, uh, spike testing, volume testing, endurance testing, and uh, scalability testing. I'm sure you have been in place of this confused unga bunga at least once, Lakshata. Yeah, I'm just like that kitty who had been trying to load the computer so many times and instead of that she kicked off the uh, keyboard to the monitor. I had been that place because uh, this uh, once the image doesn't load so many times, I feel this pain.
So yeah, this slides walks you through the different uh, steps of the performance uh, life cycle. Moving to the first one, environment checkup and prep. Basically, as a prerequisite, we need to identify and we need to verify if the environment is stable enough and is available to perform the load test. Uh, it comes with uh, three points, as in uh, we need to make sure that the, it is not uh, blocking the release that is in production and uh, it is not putting additional risk to that. Next, uh, the service is under test. The current level of... Uh, uh, load significantly determines as to uh, what the historical patterns were and we need to make sure that we are not actually impacting the production environment. Then a kill switch, once the test is running, it needs to be uh, monitoring all the above points and automatically kill the test if something seems to be off. Next is the create data uh, setup. So in this, uh, we can manually create the data or automatically create the data. So manually creating the test data is basically error prone and is time consuming uh, because if it is not well document, uh, documented as to what the test needs, uh, it would be a tedious job to do. Uh, and uh, for basically in this create uh, test data, we prepare the data that needs to be uh, on which the load test will be executed. Um, also, we usually uh, use the automated scripts to perform this uh, test data. That is actually recommended. Next, uh, moving on to the execute tests. Uh, once our test data is created, now we need to do the major step, that is executing the load test and kick on, kicking off the load test. Uh, we can do it on uh, multiple slave nodes. And uh, in PLT Jenkins, we have a separate job which basically handles this distribution of uh, 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 distributing the tests uh, across the multiple slave nodes to uh, be executed. Next is the aggregate results. After the execution is complete, results gathered from all the nodes are uh, compiled into a single report. And uh, we, sh we should actually make sure that we are uh, storing these results in semi-permanent place uh, because there is Jenkins uh, policy of uh, basically 30, pe uh, 30 day period, we just uh, expire the job and we don't get the results. So we should have that storage in place. Um, Moving on to the assert, pass, and fail. Uh, based on the pass and fail criteria that is given by the product owners, we uh, examine as in if the test is passed or fail, if it is in limit, or is, uh, is it moving across the threshold that has been provided. Uh, moving on to the store results and context, basically once the tests are analyzed, uh, we make sure that information including service, uh, service utilization, memory utilization, and CPU matrix, everything is monitored using the Datadog monitoring tools and APM uh, monitoring tool. Also uh, ensure to capture the logs before 30-day uh, detention policy that I've already mentioned across. Uh, next, we have the cleanup data. Uh, in the cleanup data, we need to make sure that service comes back to its original state, uh, which basically means scaling down the uh, uh, scaling down the uh, number of instances that were uh, done for the load test to be executed as per the uh, production uh, matrix. And also, uh, we need to remove the unnecessary data uh, that has been created over the uh, be uh, because of the load test. Hey, did you buy this uh, new dress from the e-commerce website? Uh, yeah, oh. that was so frustrating buying it on the hot season sale in the big billion days. And system actually got uh, crashed out. The payment gateway continued to load for so many times that I had to wait for like hour. And the, uh, there I felt performance testing is really needed in this, uh, in this era today. Yeah, I kind of experienced the same uh, thing. I was uh, trying to add a cute little dress for my niece. And the system crashed so many times. I suppose uh, many people were eyeing that product and maybe uh, trying to purchase it. But I do agree with you that performance testing plays an important role, uh, a very crucial role in a satisfied end user. That was a terrible experience to buy <laughs> during that time. It reminded me of the examination portal days oh, yeah. in the 12th standard when we have the portal remain down for so many times that uh, people, uh, students and faculty were so annoyed that it wasn't working fine and there was no streamlined user experience during that time. Yeah, I suppose all this is pointing to how performance testing is so crucial for a happy end user and we all know that client is king. Yeah, with the growth and uh, with the uh, with the growth of the application and technologies, we are like kind of moving towards the soft, uh, performance engineering these days, and it is uh, to have the uh, better better usability and the uh, better user experience. We definitely need performance engineering in today's era. 
Yeah, in general, performance testing uh, validates the scalability, st uh, stability, and reliability, and the sp uh, speed of the application. This is significant for providing an amazing and ultimate experience to the user. A uh, uh, introduction and uh, introducing an application in the in uh, in the market can be a proud moment. But if it has bugs, it has defects, it could be a, a hot potato, definitely. And performance. Actually, performance issues discovered in the later stage in the performance in the development life cycle can have can be actually time consuming and can be an expensive cost for the uh, for the production uh, product management basically. Uh, uh, traditionally, earlier what was happening, performance tests were executed in the later stages once all the functional testing has been done and uh, the defects were caught up in the later stages and reused then uh, developers have to sit late in the nights and have to deploy the, uh, make changes in the software or in their any particular feature that is being released and they have to do the whole process again. So it was actually majorly time consuming. So if same thing can be done in the earlier stages, why not, uh, it would actually reduce the same efforts. I would believe that performance sh uh, engineering should be implemented. Why there has been already a taboo that uh, we can have the application uh, continue to load for so many time and uh, we, we don't worry, uh, we are okay if the application is not performing very well, we are good with that. So it's, uh, there should be something that being in a, co a testing community, we should be, uh, behave like that uh, functional, non-functional testing should go hand in hand. We shouldn't focus only on the functional testing, not only about how UI automation works, how API automation works. We shouldn't be working on that. We should actually collaboratively working on all the aspects of the testing in a uh, main. Yeah, moving on to the challenges in performance testing. Like any other testing procedure, this type of testing also comes with a number of challenges. Uh, moving on to the first one, lack of business requirement in load testing or performance testing. So performance attribute of the software falls under non-functional testing time. So when you talk about the performance of the system, what do you, what do you specify? Any, any, any answers? Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Any more? Yeah, exactly. So basically how a system would behave uh, when the condition are same to the production environment, like the number of end users like you talked about, and the transaction it would be making, and what are the settings and configurations uh, that are required. So basically all these numbers, product owners are generally not able to give the exact numbers, and there is the problem uh, we are talking about. So lack of proper testing scenario, this is the second one. Uh, performance testing requires you to test the application under reasonable scenarios using any performance testing tools. And however, it takes a lot of time uh, in deciding as to what testing tool we'll be using and if we have the right environment as in, we generally face the environment issues like in staging also in production, in uh, load regions also. So we need to have a replica to just execute the, uh, replica of the production environment to execute our load tests. Uh, Similar to the limited, uh, limited environment challenges, conducting load tests on a fully functioning uh, production environment is a challenge as we talked about. And especially while testing in such situation, real-time users are also using the product. So we need to examine what is the inactive state, as in when the production environment is not uh, having a uh, high footfall. So we need to examine that and then we need to uh, run the uh, load test there. So software development teams, especially the testers, often get only limited infrastructure resources to test their code. In such uh, scenarios, teams tend to use uh, the sharing environment. So moving on to the resource tool, uh, infrastructure management adds up to the project cost. So implementing CI, CD across the organization has long-term benefits in business agility, production, robustness, security, and feature release cycle, but it has also associated costs. So the resources, tools, and infrastructure requirements significantly add up to these project costs. Thorough knowledge is required to analyze the performance test outcomes. Definitely, if you don't have any other knowledge about how you are going to analyze the performance, even if you are just done, the, uh, if you are done with the performance test and you don't have the proper analysis, you don't have actually have the matrices, you don't know how to analyze those matrices, the, even if the response time is okay, you don't know it is like around 10 seconds or 20 seconds, what we would do and how would we actually share with the product team that it is okay and it is fine, we are good with that performance. Search knowledge should be actually be aware of the uh, once we are actually analyzing the performance test. 
Another is inefficient implementation of CICD pipeline due to the lack of expertise and poor training. So if we are actually integrating CICD in our performance test and we don't have the proper knowledge and we don't have any expertise in that, how we are going to implement it. So uh, actually uh, engineers should be uh, made aware that they should be given proper training. They should be actually given what matrices they need to analyze, how they have to uh, analyze the APM monitoring tools, what needs to be done if you are actually integrating CICD uh, with the performance engineers. Uh, another is late feedback provided to developers leading to delayed fixes. So uh, even if we are doing the performance testing and we have done the CICD implementation with the performance tools and still we are not uh, it, still it's not that uh, we are actually running the test and uh, the, uh, the matrices are not properly de debugged and the issues are being traced later in the stages also. Let's say uh, the, there was an issue uh, when the feature was being tested in the production and the issue was caught, that was a, C a SEV1, but still we, were fa uh, we failed to debug in the earlier stages. So uh, this would actually hamper the product uh, productivity and uh, it would actually involve uh, developers to re-engage in the whole uh, whole process and have to, this will actually be a con con uh, proper time consuming process basically. So that uh, it should be actually fixed. So here we are providing answers to all your questions uh, around integration of uh, performance engineering with CI-CD pipeline. Uh, performance testing on the go, all the performance criteria are uh, passed on with the build itself. Uh, continuous integration and delivery coupled with automated uh, performance testing will enable finding performance issues at a very earlier stage when the code is uh, in the development phase. So basically it is a faster, more productive and cost saving approach for releasing new products and the enhancements, any feature, with minimal performance risk, thus uh, um, drastically reducing the time and efforts. We have been talking so much about what are the challenges that we are facing, but here, what is actually, uh, we have been talking about performance testing, now we are actually moving towards performance engineering. So we, uh, with what is actually performance engineering? Performance engineering is basically the integration of your DevOps with your test, uh, performance testing tools that we have rather than just and uh, rather than just printing about the testing and the reporting of the outcomes we would be actually more focused on the software reliability we would be most focused on how the performance of the software actually works performance engineering is all about collaborating and iterating all the items with the in, uh, all the items of the highest value and delivering them quickly to ensure high quality of the product as we progress towards shifting left it becomes really uh, it becomes important to ensure that we find functional non functional testing uh, issues early in the release cycle at seven we have implemented an end to end automa uh, automated process for continuous performance engineering minimizing, minimizing the monitoring time to check the uh, degradation and we have implemented the devops in the performance engineering so historically, uh, testing and tuning have been uh, distinctly separate and often competing realms. In the last few years, several uh, pocket of testers and developers have collaborated and independently just to turn the uh, create tuning ter terms. Because these teams have met the, uh, with significant success, the concept of coupling performance testing with performance tuning, now we call it as performance engineering basically. So how impactful CI-CD is? So without CI-CD, we have delayed feedback of the performance results, resulting in delayed resolutions, of course. Then we have increased release testing time. Then we have to manually scale up the services for the load test to be performed on that. Manual data setup is also needed. That is why we were focusing on the automation script. Uh, next, we need to trigger the load test execution manually and monitoring data dog, uh, Splunk logs, and every monitoring tool to examine the results. Uh, then we are analyzing the Gatling reports that we get after the uh, um, test has been executed. Then we need to scale down the services after the test has been run successfully and also we need to check if the environment is now stable. So with the CI-CD basically all these pro, uh, cons that we have found without CI-CD has been resolved. So there has been early feedback on the uh, framework limitation and the issues. There has been the reduction in the release cycle time and we, have, we can have auto-scaling enabled for the service instances to key, ensure that the serv uh, services uh, 
scale up properly even if there had been issues. Now again we have created, rather than creating the data setup manually, we, uh, we are using test data management service just to create the data setup and we can use, pull those data for using the Redis keys. Auto trigger and load test, rather than uh, just going to the Jenkins pipeline or just using the server tools, we can actually trigger the uh, load test directly from the uh, release pipeline or from the Slackbot that we have. And uh, once it is done, so we can actually uh, generate the reports using the customized framework tool that we have and it would be actually cumulative result analysis tool. Later, once a test is done and the report is being generated, now the services would be actually scaled down automatically to their original state, thereby reducing these efforts. So SDLC cycle of poor performance, basically with the agile methodology being in followed in many organizations, sprint teams uh, following sprint release becomes an important aspect. Once the product shares the requirements, uh, developers are actually working on the feature development parallelly. The software uh, parallelly QT and the performance engineers can actually work on the automation tools and they can write the test scenarios and uh, automation scripts as and when. The once the feature is deployed on the lower environment, they can actually run those scenarios and uh, do the proper uh, re feature certification and regression runs. Once, once the regression is done on the lower Once, uh, once the, uh, it is done on the lower environment, it can be actually sent to the upper environment. Uh, just we have pre-prod region basically, uh, we are using staging and the load region for that. And uh, over there we can uh, certify, the, uh, certify our feature uh, features that has been passed in the lower region earlier. And parallelly we can actually trigger the performance test with the CI CD. And if it is already there, we can actually rerun our night, uh, rerun the uh, existing features, uh, features in the, the nightly regression runs. We can actually schedule and we can have analyze the results in uh, direct uh, at the every uh, from the uh, in the nightly runs uh, for the performance uh, tools, just like we have for the functional test also. And at the each, uh, even if the uh, issues are caught in that particular time frame, we can actually. Uh, report that, uh, those issues to the developers. And once it is being done, we can release those, uh, we can certify the release in the staging and the pre-prod regions. And later on, we can actually uh, uh, just, uh, once it is already there in the release cycle, so it will be automatically triggered to the production. And thereby, the, all the effort that has been made earlier in the, uh, just uh, certifying on different stages separately. It was like taking around two to three days maximum, I suppose. Now it has been actually reduced to a few hours. So, uh, and the, the benefit of this particular model is early feedback that we are getting, reduced uh, release time cycle, reduced testing cycle time, enhanced uh, experience and quality. There is a reduced context switching that we are getting. So moving on to the Jenkins implementation. So here is the Jenkins snapshot of the uh, of the job we are running. Uh, this is the release build. So we have uh, uh, the release, um, the trigger Selenium automation stage and the WDR automation stage. So this is the functional uh, automation testing that has been executed. Then we have the trigger PLT automation and trigger site speed automation. These are the performance tests. One is the load test, other is the UI performance test. So uh, this basically has reduced the manual effort uh, by 20 minutes, as in from few hours to just 20 minutes, because we are automatically triggering the smoke load tests that are required to be run to examine if the application has not been impacted due to any other uh, uh, tickets which are in the release build. So workflow for the automation uh, solution. Moving on to the this slide, uh, which details about the workflow for this uh, solution. Uh, so while the feature development is in progress, the performance engineers, uh, engineers draft the test scenario which they want to execute, uh, which can be executed uh, using the testing tools, Gatling, J, Meter, Locus, anything that is uh, running in your firm. Uh, at C event, we have been working with Gatling, uh, which is the open source framework for uh, load test, uh, load scripting. Rather than hard coding the URLs we are actually encouraging the users to use the template file where we store the, all the uh, URLs at one place and any update on, uh, in the URLs can be done at one place and that can be used further on. So we come to one of the biggest challenges that is the uh, test management test data set creation which is a huge pain point. Uh, 
so storing the data set in feeder files can be done via CSV feeder, Redis feeder, and uh, JDBC feeder, which would expect the data uh, to be created already. So using test data management service, uh, it will help us to create the data uh, which is required to be uh, for the load test to be run on it. So next comes the test execution using Jenkins uh, do job directly or the easiest way is by just using the one-stop messaging app that is Slackbot. Um, then uh, we have, uh, then uh, we can do it by the messaging app and you can just trigger it from your mobiles and just sit and have and grab a cup of coffee without having, uh, having to look into the uh, laptop screens for the whole day. Uh, next on, we have uh, prior to the releasing it uh, to the production, the feature is deployed in pre-prod environments. So where the code stays overnight, where we can use the nightly runs and examine if the performance has been ampered or not. So thereby in easing the release certification time, it allows us to examine the service state uh, involving the latest features, uh, changes and help us in better uh, latency comparison between the different versions of the application. So before the test kicks off, the system uh, checks if the auto scaling is enabled. If it is uh, enabled, then we'll ba uh, basically scale up the instances as to compared as to the production environment. Like there are running uh, 48 uh, instances on prod, then we'll need to make our environment uh, closer to that one. As in, we'll be having uh, we'll be having 40 to 45, and we'll be running the load test on that. And we just uh, we, and then also uh, we would be executing the load test from the pipeline itself, and the result matrix are collected just after the completion of the load test results. Uh, then the uh, data doc matrix are compiled and monitors are created uh, we, uh, at the start of the test, which remains persistent in case of any failures. So all the test results detailing the Gatling test results uh, for the service response time, throughput, utilization metrics, failure pass rate can be gathered from the customized reporting framework, which in Cvent we call QE portal. Uh, we have an additional functionality there, uh, QE calendar, where we can see if the available, uh, if the slot is av available for the load test to be run on it. So let's deep dive into uh, further what is actually working behind the flow in the architecture. Consider, let's consider a use case where the user triggers a load uh, with around 50,000 users virtually from the Jenkins pipeline. Rather than actually running it on the single Jenkins pipeline, uh, we can actually have distribute the loads among the five load generators. And uh, let, uh, it would be like if we are distributing among five generators, it would be 10,000 load on the each generator. And thereby, uh, the we can actually handle the matrices for the different load generators separately. and. Uh, uh, and once the load is uh, from the each of the load generator separately, and this whole uh, master slave uh, master slave mechanism is basically can we are achieving by using Gatling as an open source tool rather than using the paid paid uh, version of the Gatling that we have. With the uh, another, if the auto scaling is enabled, what actually is doing with the auto scaling? So auto scaling is basically uh, we have the CPU utilization matrix. Let's say to 50 percent, it is already there, and if the, if any of the service CPU exceeds that 50% utilization, so the containers would actually keep up, uh, increase up. So uh, initially it was set to let five containers, and it uh, once the load test was triggered and it actually uh, exceed to uh, 60 or 70% CPU utilization. So that at that particular time, the containers would actually pop up to like eight containers or whatever it is maximum limit that we have set. So if we have actually set to like uh, 40 containers, it would be uh, updated there. And uh, with the auto abort and the notify functionality, basically we have heartbeat enabled. And what auto abort and notify is, so into the auto abort, when we are uh, triggering the test from the Slack bot, so if we have enabled the notify only, the, uh, then, uh, then only the alerts would be sent to the, uh, alerts would be sent to your uh, Slack channel or your email ID. Uh, rather than uh, aborting the particular test. So it would only the notifications would be sent there. While in the case of the auto abort, uh, all, uh, even if your uh, test is failing, no, alerts would be sent. Along with that, the test would be actually aborted automatically during uh, after like few minutes 
or once, a te uh, once you see the threshold value exceeding that particular value that is being set. So it would be actually exceeded. And uh, the heartbeat is basically triggered like after 30 sec uh, every 30 seconds, it will be going to the service just to ensure that the, if any of the serv uh, infra services actually shoot up to, uh, to, any, uh, to the maximum uh, value. So are, is, it, is it not showing any error rate is exceeding, something like that. If it is happening, then the, automatically the test would be aborted. And if you are not setting any of these functionality, if you are not enabling Autobot or Notify only, then all the functionality or the Autobot functionality would be disabled and the test would be actually running just the, uh, just the way it was running earlier. And if so also that once the test is being running in parallelly and you are actually uh, the test is actually going on and uh, even if you are, if you are, if you don't want to wait for the test results to complete and you know that your system is misbehaving that during that particular time also you can actually monitor your results in the grafana so you would get the error rate you get the cpu utilization what the requests are that being sent youtube would be actually uh, vis uh, visualized in the uh, grafana that would be actually handling uh, from the uh, f using the database of the influx and all this uh, all this data whatever you have generated it would be cumulatively sent to the qe portal that we are calling as a customized reporting framework right now and uh, all these data dog matrices plunk matrices your logs and uh, your cpu utilization matrices jvm matrices everything would be recaptured in the qe portal link basically and uh, since Ekta was earlier talking about the test data management that we have for creating the, uh, for rather than creating uh, basically a service just to create a uh, data set, rather than manually uh, feeding to the uh, bulk data for any of the uh, data set, that actually is a pain point for every one of us. So uh, in the test data management service, basically we have, a, uh, we have an abstract service and uh, we are actually using the endpoints that we have created. Let's say uh, I want to create an account, I want to create a user, and I want to create like 10,000 to 20,000 of such users. I won't be sitting there and actually sending, feeding that request directly from that API. If I'm using any of the, my service, it would actually shoot up my, uh, another load test that is going on. So just to avoid such services, we have uh, created a new service, test data management. And over there, we are uh, feeding, we are using that APIs internally and uh, calling, uh, just using that particular service directly rather than uh, calling any of other services. And uh, we are feeding the data there. And uh, once the data is being generated and it is being stored into the Redis keys. So uh, if you are, uh, if you are lost with that, you have created the data for the first time and you don't want to actually uh, create the same data every time again and again, you can just uh, use those Redis keys and reuse that particular data that you have created in the last few days. So it would be an easy way just to uh, you integrate uh, Redis with the get link and you get the answers. Implement test data management with Gatling. So within the before hook, uh, you can see that we have get data from TDM and save to Redis function allows us to fetch the Redis keys which we have created using the TDM service. For instance, as you can see from the sample scripts we have here, uh, we have created the attendees from the TDM service and further extracting the first name, last name, email from the Redis keys itself and thereby using it in our scenarios uh, in the load test which needs to be executed. So this map created for the test data uh, extractor converts the JSON into a usable form which is supported by Gatling. So moving towards the performance tests in CI CD pipeline. So as a part of the release process, we cut the branch, uh, cut the release branch and then we deploy it on production, right? So uh, the branch created uh, uh, involves validation from both functional and non-functional aspects. Uh, we have the Jenkins pipeline which governs, uh, which has these flags run integration tests will be running the API test. We have the run Selenium MWDI automation which will be uh, certifying uh, from the UI perspective. Then we have the run PLT automation which will be triggering another job which will run the load test on the environment we have passed here. Currently in uh, our uh, product we have just done for the SD50 and LD50 environment I mean, LD50 is the load environment here. Uh, then we get the Slack notification, um, which would help in further certification of the release build. Uh, 
So here is the snapshot of the Jenkins file of the PLT stage. So this slide would help you understand what is the logic which is running behind this. So we have a flag for running the PLT test as I've already discussed in the previous uh, slide. And if it is checked, the falling stage, uh, namely the trigger PLT automation, comes into picture, which triggers the build, uh, the load test build, uh, with the following parameters, uh, like we need the Slack channel, the branch name, the Maven arguments. Uh, Maven arguments are basically the load test which needs to be run. Uh, then we have the Jira ticket and the custom message and the test duration, all the performance criteria we need to pass on uh, for running the performance test. So as of now, we have hard-coded the, these values. And in case you want to run uh, the test in CI-CD pipeline, you can provide this parameter as per your feasibility in the POM XML file. So we have been talking about the Slack bot and how we can actually schedule the nightly regression runs. We have been talking so much about it. And how can we do that is basically, uh, I will be showing it now. So uh, based, these are the alerts that I was talking earlier. And uh, once the, uh, you have scheduled the test and you are, uh, one of my service was actually throwing me hard errors. And uh, during that particular time, the uh, threshold exceeded that particular value. So those alerts were being thrown in, on my Slack channel. And uh, in, uh, right now, I have actually run those tests with the notify so that uh, the tests were actually showing me the uh, only the notifications were being sent. While with the auto abort, it would actually automatically aborted my test within like few minutes. And I don't have to uh, actually wait outside for the uh, wait once the test is returned or I have to wait explicitly uh, to get the proper results. So how we are uh, scheduling the nightly regression runs with, through the Slack bot? I have been setting those parameters, whatever is needed. I'm, uh, I was using my stash URL, the, where my code is already there for the performance test, and the branch that I was passing. So uh, for the load test, app, uh, we have been using the iterated setup endurance and any other throughput, uh, throughput uh, savers, uh, ramp users per second. We were using those. and. Uh, with the load generator count, I was talking like 50,000 uh, 50, virtual users were there, and I was splitting the load among the 10,000 uh, 10, virtual users. So I can use my, uh, provide the load generator count over here among how I want to distribute my load. And within the Maven arguments, I was uh, setting which particular code I want to run against, and I was passing those values. And uh, in case if you want to send the uh, notifications only to yourself, you can just provide your name. Otherwise, you can use any private or uh, personal uh, channel and uh, over here we are providing the services and the users uh, for which we want to run the test and the ramp up duration about how many iterations we want to run the test so you can provide these also and uh, if you uh, if any of the test is also running let's say uh, my test is running and i i don't want to hamper the another test that is being scheduled for any other service and uh, i want to block the environment for my test completely so for that i can actually enable the allow uh, parallel execution checkbox that we have and uh, if we want to co push the code and the uh, files that changes that we have made during the run we can actually push the those changes to the stash also and uh, all for these auto scaling uh, service, if we want to have the uh, auto scaling enabled for any of the services, you can just enable that particular Slack uh, checkbox. And uh, for the threshold file value, if the alerts were being sent, if you are uh, providing your custom threshold value uh, where you have set the error rate and the serialization matrices for any of the services, be it couch based, be it Elasticsearch, you can just directly provide it there. And uh, you can uh, actually schedule a test directly at, if you're running at the same time, you can just start it now. Or if you want to schedule for like half an hour after the releases go, uh, after any changes are being deployed. So you can uh, click on the uh, future schedule. If you are actually scheduling it for nightly regressions, just go by the reference. So uh, this is basically my auto scaling. Uh, dashboard that uh, where I have been passing the JSON file where the service name and the minimum and the maximum count is be set for that particular service. And if I want to any further deployments to, blo uh, to not block the scaling count, since it could happen that I am uh, using the particular service and any other person is actually have made deployment and it would break my test. So during that time, I can avoid such issues and the minimum and maximum count could actually hold up for that particular time zone. And I just can enable the clock checkbox for that. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
so it's just basically you're just passing your parameters whatever you have we have this uh, we have another uh, we are using an integrated we have this uh, in house development that is being done for the auto scaling you can do it the same for us So this is basically how we are actually uh, scheduling the nightly regressions. And you can actually schedule the test even on the weekends if you want to. So Anna, this is the data dog monitoring uh, dashboard that uh, the, the alerts are being sent. So we are actually, uh, once you are scheduled the test, so it would be actually, uh, the monitors are being created at the same time. And it would be deleted once your regression is done and uh, there are no alerts being thrown at that particular time. In case the alerts are thrown, so this particular matrices will be shown, uh, thrown uh, the, on the Slack channel, you would be provided with that. And you can actually monitor what errors were there, what was the issue that you can, uh, you can just go from the uh, data dog directly. And uh, yeah. So moving to the uh, Datadog service dashboard, uh, a dashboard is a Datadog uh, tool for visually tracking and analyzing and displaying key performance matrix, which enable you to monitor the health of the uh, infrastructure. From this dashboard, uh, when can, uh, one can actually analyze the CPU utilization, containers, thread counts, and whatever the property we need to examine, the pra parameter we need to examine, the number of requests and errors at one place. So even you can add other infra services to this dashboard like Couchbase, Elasticsearch, post gray for uh, the uh, better monitoring. So moving towards the cumulative result analysis using customized uh, reporting framework, we have deployed an in-house uh, reporting frame, uh, framework called the QE portal that we have already discussed about, which will consolidate all the data around the load test rather than looking at multiple locations uh, to figure out the root cause. We just have one stop solution for you, uh, which, rec uh, which will be having every information uh, around the load test and for better analysis of the failures. As can be seen from the uh, screenshot, we have have redirect links to Stash and Gatling and Grafana, uh, where performance engineers can navigate to. Uh, beneath this, we have a section of Maven arguments, which displays the job parameters uh, which were passed while uh, running the test. This graphical representation uh, is basically to help you understand the request latencies at a quick glance. Uh, we have color coding systems as well, just to uh, have uh, an easy approach of analyzing the test. What are the best practices that we, uh, we can get uh, while we are integrating performance testing with continuous integration? So we have, uh, once we get the test early, so basically if it is already there in the CICD pipeline, we don't have to worry about complete test to execute properly. Uh, we don't have to wait for that to execute. Rather, uh, it would be already integrated and there would be an efficient process for that. It would be actually time, uh, it won't be a time consuming process for any of us. And we can actually automate your, uh, it, automate your testing. You don't have to actually wait uh, for the complete process. Uh, you don't have to actually manually do any of the efforts. All would be done uh, automatically or from, your, uh, from the data creation to from, uh, from even just you need to write your scripts and everything would be done automatically from your data creation to your script executions, from, your, uh, from results, uh, results handling. And you just directly need to share your results with the product team. And even just by looking at the color coding, they would get an idea just at the quick glance that everything is fine and we can, we can just good, uh, give them a good heads up also. Set the benchmark. The benchmark is also uh, the challenge that we get, everyone gets us with the benchmarking. Uh, generally, the product team doesn't give us the proper numbers what, uh, against which we want to run. So we can actually uh, set the benchmarks from our executions and the first step. Uh, once the feature was deployed, uh, once the feature was created the first time and we are actually running those tests for the first time, we can, uh, we can provide the benchmarks in the first instance only. And they, uh, with those benchmarks and uh, from the QE portal, we would already be set to the green color. So uh, one, and in the later stage, is if, if we are re-running the rows test, so those would be actually compensated if, if you show through any errors like uh, being a red errors or the error rate exceeded, those would be handled directly. So next we have uh, only test important pieces of your application. So at the earlier stage, it is not necessary to uh, test everything, the entire application, which is basically time consuming and is expensive. So we rather focus on the slowness areas or the most vulnerable areas where we expect a high load. Um, 
focusing only on the most at risk parts uh, which allows us some certainty of performance with minimal cost and time spent next we have is make reporting part of the process so no matter the tool used for the performance testing a requirement should that uh, should be that it generates consistent and useful reports these reports should make it clear if the current build of the application meets minimally acceptable performance standards and how much stress the server is under uh, at each phase of testing. So next we have uh, is increase or retain the load co uh, code coverage. So, so with new enhancement, uh, we need to ensure that we increase the coverage of the test uh, cases or we are at the same level because we just don't want to decrease our test coverage. We need to in uh, include all the tests uh, which we are delivering with each release. So this will help in retaining and increasing the code coverage. We are good to go with the questions. Sir.